Hello, everyone. And uh, my name is uh, Victoria Carly, and um, uh, I've been uh, in Vegas now for a little 10 years, but um, I'm originally from uh, San Antonio, Texas, and um, I'm a dermatologist here in Las Vegas, and uh, 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 I work for Vivita Dermatology, and um, thank you all so much for having me here to talk to y'all. Um, I'm really excited and hope I can give you all some uh, helpful insights into going into whether it's into dermatology or any aspect of that field. And um, I'm happy to answer any questions y'all may have. And, uh, uh, you know, hopefully I can help help y'all with uh, moving along in that path. Um, the way that I got interested in dermatology to begin with, um, I'm actually kind of weird. I, I knew I wanted to be a doctor when I was five. And uh, yeah, uh, I decided I wanted to be a dermatologist when I was 12. Um, uh, my uncle actually has a condition called vitiligo, which um, is when uh, uh, your pigment uh, will actually start to go away. And so it'll turn white, like literally white, like a piece of paper. And so, um, uh, uh, the, of course, the, the darker your underlying skin is, the more it can kind of stand out. Um, uh, uh, and even though it's not a, a contagious or anything like that, unfortunately, one thing that can be difficult with conditions on the skin is that, uh, of course, people see it, you know, so then, uh, and his underlying skin tone was about mine, maybe a little bit darker. And um, a, a really good friend of mine in middle school and high school had pretty severe cystic acne, again, not a, a contagious condition, certainly not anything that she did or my uncle did to cause their conditions, but since they're literally on their skin and for both of them, it was on their face, um, not a whole lot you can do to hide it, but people see it and they kind of go like, oh, like what's wrong with you? And they don't, you know, they kind of move a little like this when you, they're standing next to them or sitting next to them. And nobody likes that. It, it's hard enough sometimes to have uh, uh, those kind of conditions uh, uh, just to deal with, let alone to have people's reactions to them. So for me, uh, uh, one thing I've, I've always really liked about dermatology is uh, not only the opportunity to medically treat somebody uh, on the outside, but also to potentially have the ability to treat them on the inside too. So. Wow, that's that's cool. Um, so uh, Malcolm is going to start with the questions that his sure. students have for you. Mr. Wilkes, you're on mute. Oh yeah, sorry. Oh, I can't. Oh, there you go. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about uh, the career in dermatology? What the career in dermatology consists of? Sure. So one thing that's really cool about dermatology is that there's actually a whole lot of things you can do within it. Um, uh, within dermatology itself, uh, I actually do uh, primarily a lot of medical dermatology. So what that consists of is uh, dealing with um, a, a lot of medications and a lot of what uh, most people would kind of consider uh, like rashes. So um, you know, like psoriasis and eczema and, um, you know, uh, 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 you know, even things like uh, you, uh, uh, you know, come in, you use something and it irritates your skin and it gets all red and itchy, um, uh, things like that. Um, uh, you know, even like in uh, uh, kids, you know, getting things like warts or um, a, 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 a burn, um, things like that. Um, but, you know, it can also uh, consist of, you know, people get uh, you know, like a, a, a cyst or a, a bump or something that they want to get removed. Um, it can uh, consist of things like getting moles checked. Um, but uh, uh, on the other end, it can also involve things like uh, surgical procedures, um, you know, when people have things like uh, skin cancers or things like that that need to be uh, removed. Um, or uh, also on uh, more of the cosmetic side, um, when people are getting things like uh, laser procedures, um, uh, also things like uh, uh, chemical peels and uh, uh, fillers and uh, uh, injectables like Botox and things like that. So as I kind of covers a, a big, big spectrum of things, which I think is one thing that a lot of people like about dermatology is that it kind of gives you a broad depth of uh, uh, things that you can you can do within it. So uh, one other thing that dermatology can also do, uh, I don't uh, uh, personally do it, but uh, we do also have the um, 
ability to within our um, board certification to actually read our own slides because um, we do do a lot of um, uh, biopsies as well. You know, like let's say someone comes in and they are concerned about potentially a skin cancer or a mole that they get removed, something like that. When we do remove them, we send that little piece to the lab for someone to look at under the microscope. We actually have the ability with our um, uh, certification after residency to specifically read that under the microscope. Um, like I said, I, I don't personally do that, but for people that do enjoy that, you can still even read your own slides um, uh, when you finish as well. So. And I think you decided to um, you chose dermatology at 12. Was it because of your uncle, or what made you decide on dermatology over any other medical? Yeah, so yeah, a lot of it was because of my uncle and my and my friend just seeing what they had to uh, uh, go through with um, uh, their uh, skin conditions and how uh, uh, people were, you know, would treat them uh, based on that, even though it was nothing that they did to cause their conditions and that they weren't contagious. Uh, 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 I wanted to be able to do something to, to help them um, with it. Um, you know, a lot of other conditions, which don't get me wrong, they're just as serious, if not more serious, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, diabetes and high blood pressure and things like that. Um, uh, you can't necessarily tell that someone has them looking at someone, you know, but, uh, uh, you know, things on the skin, just because they are on the outside, everyone can see it. So then it makes it that much harder sometimes for people when they have, uh, especially chronic medical or dermatologic conditions, because then, you know, they constantly feel like either someone's looking at them or they're having to pull on their sleeves to cover it up, or they're trying not to itch or scratch, or they're hiding that something is potentially draining or constantly having to use band-aids or things like that. And it's tough. So uh, 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 that's what really drew me to particularly dermatology. There it goes. And so far, what do you enjoy most um, uh, from the, your, your field? I'm so sorry, it cut up a little bit. Did you just ask like, what did I enjoy most within my field or? Yes. Okay, um, I think what I enjoy most is um, uh, uh, some of the relationships that I've been able to uh, establish with my, my patients. Uh, like I said, I, I've been here in Vegas now for about 10 years and uh, you know, some of my patients now, well, especially pre pandemic, now we haven't quite gotten back there yet. But, you know, some of my patients, when they come in, it was more like, oh, hi, so good to see you. And you're hugging them, you know, before you're uh, now we're kind of more on the elbow bump uh, thing. But, you know, just really getting to uh, uh, know people, uh, not just as patients, but as people, you know, when they're coming in and, you know, you're like, hey, Mrs. Jones. And, you know, but when we're talking about it, it's also like saying, so how's your daughter's, you know, getting ready for her wedding or, you know, whatever, uh, like you're talking to them as a person, in addition to talking to them about what else is uh, uh, going on with them, uh, 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 with their skin and, you know, whatever else that I'm treating with them. Uh, 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 I think those are some of the, uh, the biggest things with it. I think also too, um, as people do get better with their uh, skin conditions, uh, seeing that transformation uh, with them uh, is is also a, a really cool also. Um, you know, some things like, for instance, like someone that has had pretty uh, significant acne or psoriasis or something like that, where I've had patients when I first met them that literally like when they came in, uh, uh, you know, like, especially like if they had long hair or something like it's all down and over their face or they have a hat and it's all, covered and uh, you know they finish their course of Accutane or they get on a biologic or something for their psoriasis and they're clear and by the end they're all like this and they're happy and they're like oh my gosh this is amazing and they're excited like those are those are the fun transformations when you when you see that that uh, you know as a person they're all happy those are the those are the best ones What special or experience do you have being to the job? And you know, I'm so sorry. The the question kind of cut off. Like it was it was choppy. I couldn't understand what you were saying. I'm sorry. What special skills or experience do you have being the job? What, can, what what I'm so sorry. It's okay, Malcolm. I'm sorry. I know you're in the middle of a school, and sometimes the the uh, connectivity is challenging. Uh, the question is what 
uh, special skills or experiences do you bring to the job? Ah, okay. Um, so to me, I, I think the, the uh, biggest one is just um, being non, non-judgmental and uh, open to communication. Um, you know, I will say amongst uh, other things that we do uh, uh, also treat are, you know, just because they are on the skin, you know, um, sometimes people come in with uh, things in certain areas of their body that, uh, uh, you know, a lot of people would consider uh, private, um, or, you know, sometimes uh, there are also, you know, like a, a, a sexually transmitted infections or things like that, you know, um, and, you know, hey, we're, we're all humans, and, uh, you know, as, as someone's a doctor, uh, uh, I'm certainly not ever there to judge anyone. I'm only there to get people happy and healthy and feeling good again. And uh, all, that's all my goal is. I, I'm never there to judge anyone. I just want to help people get on the road to being safe and healthy. And, and that's, that's my big uh, uh, goal. Uh, and to me, no one should ever feel like that uh, their doctor is judging them or chastising them. If you ever feel like that, then you need to see another doctor because that's not a very good doctor in my opinion. But um, uh, 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 I think that's one of the biggest things is uh, making your patients feel comfortable uh, as they can uh, to talk to you because certain areas are just not the funnest to have to talk about with anyone. Um, but then, uh, uh, you know, also making people feel like that they're not going to be judged no matter, you know, what, what it is that the, the situation is. So. Okay, that's, that's cool. Um, the one I want to kind of ask some more um, logistical questions. So you knew since you were 12 that you wanted to be a physician. So did you fo- focus on science courses in high school? I'm, okay. I did. Yes. Do you know, is that pretty much a prerequisite to be able to go to college for this And then could you weigh in on how many years of college then you did spend preparing? Sure. So um, uh, uh, for for me, actually, so uh, uh, I guess kind of backing up for what you were saying in high school, uh, 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 since I did kind of um, preemptively know that's what I was wanting to do, um, I did try to uh, uh, take like, uh, you know, like a lot of AP classes and things like that to uh, try to uh, prepare myself uh, uh, once I got into college. Um, so actually going into college, uh, uh, I went in with uh, about almost 30 hours. So um, I, I only, uh, I didn't plan it, but I only was in college for three years. Um, I would say on average, most people are there for, for four years. Um, uh, but uh, uh, Usually, like it, it depends on the state, but like in Texas, for instance, you know, there's there are certain requirements you need to get into a, a medical school. Um, I would say, on on average, uh, uh, the actual requirements themselves, you don't necessarily need a bachelor's to get them. Like they 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 don't actually take a full four year degree to get them, but. Um, that the vast majority of people uh, will get a, a bachelor's uh, uh, to before they start medical school. And honestly, uh, I think another reason too is the kind of things that you're going to be, you know, having to talk to people about and facing and things like that. It, you're going to, in general, want to be that old anyways, because it'd be kind of hard just from a maturity standpoint and everything at, you know, any younger to, to try and start to like, face them and think about them and have to talk to someone on a regular basis about them like you kind of need to be a little bit older to to be ready for those kinds of things regardless so 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 you went to college and then how long is medical school and then what did you have to do after medical school to be able to specialize in dermatology Sure. So medical school is four years. And then um, within those four years, the first two years are usually um, uh, primarily focused on um, uh, uh, like academic or book learning. Uh, they, they have started more and more integrating more clinical uh, uh, courses uh, throughout. Um, usually the first two years, um, a lot of it is, or in the very beginning at least, um, it's more with what are called standardized patients, or it's kind of um, uh, uh, more like uh, uh, actors that are kind of 
pretending to be patient so you can practice, you know, like learning how to ask questions and things like that. Because believe it or not, a lot harder than you think. Uh, it definitely takes uh, time and skill and practice uh, to get uh, 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 better at, 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 you know, interacting with patients and, and, and figuring out the, the best way to uh, uh, handle patients and, and, and asking awkward questions and, and things like that. Um, but, uh, and then as you move along by third and fourth year, they're all real patients. Um, and uh, 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 by third and fourth year, you're, you're either in a hospital or a clinic setting the whole time. You're not really in a classroom uh, uh, at all at that point. Um, and then, uh, during your uh, fourth year of uh, medical school is when you start applying for um, the specialty that you want to get into. Because by the time you graduate from medical school, you are per se at that point a doctor. Um, however, no one after four years of medical school is ready to see any patients. You would not want you would not want anyone that has graduated from medical school to actually be your doctor. Like I was definitely not ready to see patients after four years of medical school. And the main reason is the four years of medical school give you very general knowledge, but you don't have enough of any particular field to start like regularly seeing patients. So that's when you start doing residency and residency is when you get that specialized training in any given field. Whether it's like, you know, so for primary care, that'd be like internal medicine, family practice, uh, uh, pediatrics. Uh, for dermatology specifically, uh, a residency is four years. And um, it, the first year is what's called internship. And um, uh, uh, that's usually either uh, uh, in a, a, a primary care field like internal medicine or something called a transitional year. And then it's uh, three years of dermatology. So you do three straight years of literally just skin. Uh, uh, and that's all you do for three years. And then after that is then when you're ready to go on, on your own, so. Wow, so that's, that's a lot of um, education and a lot of time, for yeah. sure. Now I will say the one good thing is at least in residency, you're not making a, a, the, like the, the, quite the salary that you make when you're done with everything. But at least by residency, you are starting to make some money. So as opposed to having to pay for your training, at least you're getting paid for your training. So um, uh, that does help at least a, a, a little bit on that end. So. Got it. So um, what other, if, if someone um, maybe isn't sure that they want to commit to that length of time for education. Are there other jobs that say you have at your practice that are entry level or require other types of education, but maybe not, you know, eight plus years of education? Yeah, so absolutely. So um, I guess uh, 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 going, uh, I guess, uh, entry level up. So uh, other uh, entry level um, uh, or, or sorry, entry level positions um, would be um, so there's something called an MA or a medical assistant and um, medical assistants can work not just in dermatology, but in, in a multitude of fields. Um, and in our clinic specifically, um, they work with um, uh, uh, rooming the patients. Uh, they also help with scribing. So like for, for our practice in particular, they're in the room with us the entire time. Um, uh, they help with uh, documentation. Uh, uh, they're also uh, there to help like when we do any procedures, uh, they help with, you know, get everything together uh, 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 for the patient. They help with assisting when we're doing any uh, surgeries and biopsies, they help with doing the dressings, um, uh, 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 the prescriptions, uh, things like that. Um, uh, uh, and, um, after uh, getting either your high school degree or a GED, uh, MA school, I think on average, cause they have both um, online uh, uh, degree programs uh, as well as, uh, uh, well, I'm assuming life, if life programs have gone back. Um, I think depending on how you structure it, I think they can be roughly anywhere from like nine months-ish uh, uh, to get the, uh, uh, the degree for that. And then I think they also like so many hours of, of training as, as well. Um, uh, uh, and, and that's a, an, an MA uh, a level uh, position. Um, but like I said, uh, MAs though can also be in pretty much any field because uh, uh, every uh, uh, 
like I said, every specialty, I would say at this point, pretty much uh, uh, utilizes uh, uh, MAs. Um, then um, we don't specifically have um, uh, uh, nurses or RNs in our uh, practice. Um, I could see potentially, I, I, I'm trying to think, maybe in a plastic surgery office. I know sometimes they do use RNs uh, for, um, uh, uh, um, like as injectors sometimes for uh, fillers. But um, uh, in our practice, uh, uh, we don't have any uh, nurses. We do have nurse practitioners and we do have um, uh, physician assistants. Um, now for both of those, those are um, uh, postgraduate degrees. So both of those physicians, uh, they did go to college and, and get college degrees. And then um, a, a PA is um, a, a, a master's uh, level degree. So it's a two year program uh, after uh, their college degree. And then after they get their PA, at that point, same thing, they can go into to any field, like they don't have to do dermatology, they can they can do any field they want. And then their their training is just really based on whichever physician, uh, uh, you know, of whatever field uh, they're uh, um, chosen to work with and then however they want to uh, train them. Um, for uh, nurse practitioners, um, theirs is more through uh, like the College of, of Nursing. And then there's, I think there's a few different ways that they can go about uh, uh, getting the nurse practitioner uh, uh, pathway uh, through that. And then same thing, I, they can go into a multitude of fields with that. And then depending on the um, uh, uh, physicians they work with at that point, then their training can be set up uh, with uh, the physician they're with at that point. Um, the thing with both PAs and, and nurse practitioners is just there's their um, training once they graduate, it's not a like a residency program like a, a, a doctor's is. So it's their training is a little bit just dependent on whoever hires them and how in, you know much or intensive the, the training is in that given field at that point. So, and then uh, uh, otherwise, uh, I'm sorry, on our, because uh, uh, we do have a med spa in our um, main office, which is on the Southwest side of town. Um, we do also have um, uh, uh, estheticians uh, that do like our facials and um, the, uh, uh, our lasers. And um, uh, for that program, uh, that is, I believe for that, you, um, it's, it just requires a, a, a high school um, a, a degree. And um I believe that one, same thing, like they have, uh, I, I think you can even do a mix of like online and live um, uh, training. I think for those, they do want some live because they have you do like hours, you know, where you're with um, uh, 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 patients. And it's usually a mix of different uh, procedures as far as, you know, like uh, uh, facials and uh, uh, like I said, the different lasers and chemical peels and, and things like that. And I think depending on the program, uh, uh, it can be anywhere from like a year or two and uh, depending on, you know, how many hours you're able to, to get in and, and things like that, so. Great, it sounds like a lot of different um, career opportunities mm -hmm. in that same area. So yeah. that's cool. What, okay, so if we're, mostly going to be, um, this will be mostly seen by high school students. So if a high school student is really thinking this might be of interest to me, what advice do you have for them to start uh, doing now? So uh, to me, what I would recommend is first off, if you can try to see if you can um, uh, uh, reach out and shadow with someone, uh, uh, you know, and, and if you can uh, try to and see if you can uh, uh, shadow uh, uh, in an office that uh, potentially um, uh, has uh, those, even those different um, uh, positions uh, available that you can kind of see what everyone uh, does um, uh, so that you can see what exactly is involved with all those different um, uh, uh, positions. And, you know, I would say talk to all of them and see what was involved in their training. You know, how do they like their jobs? How do they, how was their training for them? How did they like it? You know, what, what is their day-to-day uh, -day like? You know, how is their a life work balance, like, you know, cause depending on, you know, what your, you know, someone's particular situation is or what they're thinking for the future, you know, like those kind of things can, you know, of course, you know, make a difference and stuff. So uh, uh, um, uh, that's what I would 
That's what I would recommend. Cause I definitely do think that was it the truth is in no proof is in the pudding. I was gonna say the truth is in the pudding, but that's not right. Um, but, um, uh, uh, you know, and see like how much, you know, do people, you know, really enjoy it? What is the, the realities of, you know, what, what do people really get to do? What do they not get to do? What do they wish they could do? Um, uh, uh, and, or what do they think? No, this is great. This is exactly what I wanted. This is exactly what I thought it was going to be. And I wouldn't change anything. Oh, great. Then that's perfect. You know, um, uh, so then at least uh, if they were thinking of going into something, they talked to someone and yep, that is exactly what I thought, then great. They can feel that much more confident going into it. Or if they were thinking something and then the person that's doing it tells them like, you, no, no, actually you don't get to do that at all. That's done by this person. And you're like, oh, okay. It's like Then you at least get to know ahead of time, you know? So, and if possible, even try to talk to um, people at, you know, multiple places, you know, cause um, depending on the uh, uh, office, you know, different offices may have, you know, different staff doing different things or um, uh, different procedures. So, you know, the more people you can talk to all the better, so. That is great. And um, certainly we will forward over any questions we get if we have any follow-up questions for you. But Dr. Farley, thank you so much for spending time with us this morning. Yeah, of course. I'm so glad to that I got to talk to y'all. And, you know, certainly if there's a, a, anything else we can do, any other questions, or, you know, if y'all ever uh, uh, need anything, uh, I'd be more than happy to help. So. Terrific. Yeah. Awesome.